Boulder County Commission not back in session. <laughs> Next on the agenda will be Korea so Gulf Coast. Ms. Kim Bodine requests. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. I'm Kim Bodine. I'm the Executive Director for Career Source Gulf Coast. And this morning we have um, on the agenda a four-year plan. It's a plan that we have to write, even though it's called a four-year plan. Sometimes we write it every two years. It depends on the federal government and the state government and changes that they're making. But the four-year plan is basically a document that gives an overall uh, comprehensive view of how we operate in our region. Um, there's not a lot of new information in there. As we change processes, we add that to the plan when we rewrite it. But there shouldn't be anything in there that's a surprise um, to you all. As you know, we have a comprehensive center in Panama City, Florida. We have an affiliate center in Gulf County, Florida. And then we have an affiliate center here in Franklin County, Florida, which is the community center by the bridge here. So we've been operating. We feel like it's important to have a presence in every county that we're in, and we've been able to afford to do that with support of our municipalities, our counties, and other partners across the region. So I don't think you'll find anything different in the plan. I do like to, though, whenever I come before the county commissioners, just remind the commissioners of a couple of things. Attached to the plan is our local elected official agreement. Um, I, I, those of you who have known me for a while, I've, I've been in this field for 28 years. I've been the director for 25 years. So I've, I've been around here for, for a little while. And um, so you'll know that these local elected official agreements are signed every so often. The last time I think we signed this one was when WIOA, the WIOA law came into effect to replace WIA at the federal level. So that was probably in 2015, 2016, thereabouts. And the most important thing that I tell commissioners about that local elected official agreement is that the BOCCs in all three counties that we operate in are the grant recipient. They're the subrecipient for this grant. And they have liability for the funds that we use. And you can't designate that liability to anyone else. And, and basically what that means is that if we do something um, with funds that we're not supposed to do, and the federal government comes down and says, hey, we're questioning these costs, we think they're disallowed, it's up to our counties to pay the tab for that. So not that that's pleasant information to share, but I do want to make sure people understand that. We have never had a disallowed cost in this area, but you know, sometimes it happens because people do crazy things, and sometimes it happens because people just have a misunderstanding. The laws are very complex that govern our, govern our money. We probably have 25 funding streams. So um, there's, there's a big book of how to say no to something, and there's a one page or on the things we can say yes to most of the time. So we're, we're gonna do our level best to never have any disallowed costs, but it, but it does happen occasionally in, in regions. We are one of 24 workforce regions across the state of Florida. As you know, Florida is a very diverse state. We think it's important that our regions reflect the local economy and the local people that we're serving. And so we feel like um, we have a better chance of doing that with the regions that are the sized that we have. We know that in some states, um, you might have a region that's 20 counties. Um, so Florida is a little different in that sense, but we think it serves us well. So on to the bylaws. Those are also in the plan, and when you approve the plan, if you so choose to do that, the bylaws will also be approved. We made changes to the bylaws this year. Um, so there's the significant things that we made changes to is we added that there will be within 10 days a notification to the Board of County Commissioners when one of our um, seats goes vacant for the board. I guess there's been some issues where vacancies have lingered and, and sometimes it is difficult to find people to serve on volunteer boards as you all probably know. So there's a 10 day notice in there. Two other significant changes. We wanted to make sure that um, you all felt comfortable and um, had no hesitation about the fact that when you all appoint people to workforce boards, which by federal law is a requirement, that that member understands that they serve um, at your pleasure. 
So if, if they are doing something or reflecting in some way that you don't appreciate, you have every authority to remove them from our board as well. Secondly, there's um, some laws that are in play right now in the legislature. Um, and in those laws, for a variety of reasons, I believe that there will be um, language so that local elected officials can remove a director of a workforce board. As it stands now under state law, the governor can reach in and remove a executive director of a workforce board or a CEO of a workforce board for cause. But it doesn't um, designate that the local elected officials can because I believe that's going to pass and because I believe you all should have that authority anyway as local elected officials. We went ahead and put that language into these bylaws so that if there was a unanimous vote of each of the board of county commissioners in Bay Gulf and Franklin County, that you could remove me or who is ever in this position for cause. Um, I don't have any um, anxiety about doing that. I think that that is very normal for local control that you all should have the ability to do that and act swiftly if you ever needed to do that. So those are the significant changes to the bylaws. Um, other than that, I would entertain any questions that you have about the plan, the planning process. Fairly the board on in a, in a discussion. I got one question, Commissioner Lockley. I was just looking if I can find out where I was at here. Where, where it said the initial terms of board members, mm -hmm. and then you got all the different categories, private sector. What is CBO for? Community-based organization. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm looking through here to try to find that, but I never saw it, so I just wanted to ask that. Yes, question. sir. That's Other what that, that stands for. I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Ms. Kim, do, do we have, currently have people in different positions on the board? You do. And actually, okay. I'd like to recognize Mr. Ted Mosteller. He's been serving on our board for many, many years, for as long as I've been the director, actually. Mm -hmm. Betty Croom is another member. We have a vacancy in Franklin County that's been difficult to fill. We need it from the private sector. Mm -hmm. um, so normally the way it works, and in federal law it spells it out, that a, a business or a trade association would make recommendations to the county commission. In Bay and Gulf County, uh, that's often the Economic Development Alliance. It mm -hmm. could be a chamber of commerce, um, but that, that's under the law. That's how the recommendations should come to you all. Mm -hmm. In some cases, counties just recommend who they want, mm -hmm. and because you're the local elected officials, we would, we would never disagree with that. But, you know, we meet um, about every other month. Mm -hmm. it, our region is a little bit more difficult, I think, because we're split by a time zone. So Bay County's in Central, and then my other two counties, Gulf and Franklin, are Eastern time. We try to make it as easy as possible to, to meet. Um, we pay for mileage for board members that travel to our meetings, if they're traveling to Panama City for that meeting. And then we video teleconference the meeting from the Gulf Franklin Center in Gulf County. So it's not just on the phone, but you can actually see the parties in either room. If you don't want to attend either of those ways, you can certainly call into the meeting as well. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else got any questions? Pleasure to vote. So moved. Second. Got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Parrish, second by Commissioner Jones. Discussion. Discussion. Uh, in, in the motion, Mike, I want to direct staff to advertise for this other position that we're missing on this board uh, and see if we can get somebody to come forward that would like to be a member from the private sector of the Gulf Coast, uh, Gulf Coast Workforce Board and advertise and see if we can't fill that other position. I'll amend my second to reflect that. Just to, be, just to be clear, Kim, so we're, approach, we're approving the, uh, the four-year plan, the changes to the bylaws, and advertising for to fill that vacancy. Mm -hmm. So everybody understands? Okay. Okay, so we got a motion on the floor. The first and the second been amended. So to be advertised for that third position. Y'all ready to vote? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, pass unanimous. Thank you. Thank you for your support. We you appreciate too, everything you do for us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Next on the agenda will be Ms. Deborah Belcher.
Report CDBG. Good morning. Good morning. Um, today I only Let have. Let me get your name for the record. Okay, Deborah Belcher, uh, President of Romellis Planning and Development Services. Mm -hmm. um, I only have one item for you today. Um, <coughs> We, we advertised for bids and um, got bids from three different vendors. Um, we've already made one award from this uh, bid package, which was for Annie and William Banks. We now have another award that I'd like to recommend uh, for Paul Sanders, um, and that would be to purchase a home from Clayton Homes of Panama City. Uh, in the amount of $74,308.69. And uh, so I'd recommend, th this is less than our limit of $75,000. Um, it is not the lowest price model. We did receive um, a range of proposals, um, some of which were better quality than others. So what I did was a a listing of each of the models that were proposed and the various features and the, the based on the specifications that the vendors provided so you could see some quality differences between the different models and uh, different features sizes things of that nature so um, I um, pointed out pros and cons and um, as with the banks um, um, Mr. Sanders made a selection uh, of his choice, and um, so I am recommending that the board approve funding for the purchase um, for $74,308.69 plus additional funds for um, the dock stamp and recording fee. So moved. So I got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Master, second by Commissioner. Jones discussion. Um, will that go to 75 with the dock fee? Um, the no, it will not, but uh, also, um, that would not be included in the 75 anyway. Okay, now one more question What, uh, what do they get in the trailer? Just Refrigerator and range, and no washer or dryer. That is not included, and and this is based on the federal regulations that we deal with. Um, these are designed to be very energy efficient, which we are also required to do. So we have upgrades to uh, the insulation levels, the um, SEER seasonal energy efficiency rating on the heat pump systems, um, low E uh, energy efficient windows. Um, and, and in the specs, I sort of upgrade the, the things that are most important for the durability of the home, the type of the subfloor and, you know, the, the cabinets, things of that nature that tend to wear out. But they get heat and air. <clears throat> yes, sir. Kind of hot water. Yes, sir. It's heat, air. Okay, just basic. These are three bedroom, two bath homes that we've been dealing with so far, except for one we did a two bedroom, two bath. Okay. All righty. Y'all ready to vote? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passed unanimous. Okay. Thank you very much. I have much. a question for you. When's Jason Milner going to get his, be able to get his trailer? We're expecting the. Um, replacement home for Annie and William Banks to maybe arrive this month okay. that's what we were told to expect now you know it wasn't a guarantee um, so when that arrives that of course they'll do the setup and then the banks will have you know once have, they once they see they're getting their trailer they'll be able to move the trailer right. to him right yes okay, he's ready I mean he's yes. set up and ready yeah that is, that is the plan and and they're aware of of the urgency Okay. What about the other fella? Um, we, uh, Angela Webster and I are going to see the Creamers this afternoon, if that's your question. Yep. I'm not sure which ones. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then also we're working on um, contracts for um, 
Kathy Hill, who was in the uh, floodplain on Buck Street, and also for Mary Thomas, who was on Ridge Road. The board has approved those two, uh, but they were not in the bid package the way we we need uh, to go to the vendors who submitted and get specifics for those two locations. And I expect, hopefully, I'm hoping that we'll have those worked out for your next board meeting. Okay. And then Chairman. there's another one that you recently did, and I'll be working on that one as well, uh, another Banks family. Okay. What about, uh, did we ever, I know it might not be CDBG, but between you and, and Ms. Angeles here in the room, what are, did we ever get anything worked out for Mr. Dennis at all? If not, I mean, I, I'd like to know about that by the next meeting. That might be an uh, Angela question. That's fine. The next meeting's fine. I'm, I'm not trying to get her yeah. say uh, stuff on the yeah. fly. But. As we did say, though, as, and as you're recalling, I think mm. that he's not eligible for CDBG because of his income, mm. um, but I think they have had some communication with him. Right. Okay. Keep up the good. Anybody else? Kind of? Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next on the agenda will be Clerk of the Code, Miss Miss Marcia M. Johnson. I have no other report other than what Aaron already brought up. Okay. Thanks. Next on the agenda will be the county coordinator, Mr. Michael Maroon. We're getting there, Commissioners. We're getting there. Oh, oh yeah. <clears throat> All right, so we are ready to item. 10, which is on page 5, so I'm going to skip on to page 6, item 11. On that, on that old library thing, they're going to have a that job? Oh, yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me take that back. There was a pool. Uh, I'll talk to her about that because there was a pool for a part-time that you guys already approved a long time ago that she hired. So we can either pull from that pool or re-advertise to see. Board's preference. I don't want no. How would re-advertise? It's best to re-advertise. Okay, yeah, I'll let her know. No, no, no. Yeah. 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 There's a couple more ones. I'll let her know. Okay. What channel are you on? Page 11, sir. Page 6, channel 11. Are we ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, to January 7th meeting, the board was notified that the county received the Florida Department of Transportation signed mm -hmm. agreement for the work on Timber Island Road. The $800,000 project includes repaving Timber Island Road from Highway 98 to the Caribou River and building guardrails on the Timber Island Bridge. The board authorized staff to start negotiations with Dewberry Engineers, the county's engineering firm, about the design improvements for this project. County staff and Dewberry agreed to scope of work for $65,579.21. Therefore, Dewberry submitted a contract for the board's approval. I need action to authorize the chairman's signature on that contract. So Second. Second. I've been waiting on this. <laughs> I got a motion on the floor by two thirds of the board. Uh, let's see, Commissioner Masson, <laughs> Commissioner Perry, second by Commissioner Jones. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passed unanimous. Changing to the next channel, as Commissioner Massey would say, at a previous meeting, Commissioner Parrish asked staff to research the possibility of reapplying for the Florida Department of Transportation's Transportation Alternatives, known as TA, funding program for sidewalk on Highway 98 from Prado to the Ace Hardwood driveway in Apalachicola. I attached to, your, to my report that resolution is required as part of the application. I need you guys to authorize the submittal of the application and the chairman's signature on the resolution. So moved. Second. Got a motion on approved by Commissioner Perry, second by Commissioner Jones. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passed unanimous. And know that Mark and Courtney are up there to Chipley today for another FDOT um, uh, class. That's okay. how we build up Courtney becoming lab certified to do FDOT projects in the county. Okay, okay, so it won't be just Mark anymore. Well, she takes the classes and the county is certified, let's put it that way. <laughs> Something we'd like the two cities to, to consider at some point. Okay, so on to, thir uh, on to 13. 
On Wednesday, January 22nd, I met with Texas A&M representative that we're here to do a Weems site visit as part of the technical assistance program. It's a grant we received. It's a grant because we're receiving services and are paying for it. It was a very informative conversation as they explained what they have experienced nationally with healthcare, healthcare in rural areas. And I provided some history on Weems from the board perspective. We discussed in more detail what type of outcome the county could expect from their visit and the analysis of the data they were collecting. They agreed to review, review each of the health care proposals. That's under consideration by the county. Then sent a report back to the county, um, reporting, uh, type that wrong, weighing in the pros and cons of each proposal. The Texas a and representatives would like a list of the board's top three health care goals to consider while reviewing the proposals. I've summarized, based on past board discussions, what I consider to be the top three health care goals. First, access points for health care needs throughout the county. Third, a sustainable business model for health care in the county. I'm sorry, that was second. Yeah. And third, the ability to grow and expand additional health care services based on the community needs. Texas A&M representatives would like this list as soon as possible so they can provide that report to you as quickly as possible. Right to the boat. So I, yeah, I need you guys to discuss, tell me if you like, you don't like, how you want me to change this list, and I'll submit it to Texas A&M with your um, blessings. Right to the boat. Second. 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 Got a motion on floor by Commissioner Harris, second by Commissioner Jones. Any more discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. All the poll that passed unanimous. All right. Uh, out of 14, we have received two reimbursable grants through Big Bend Healthcare Coalition. The first is for $8,000 that will be used to purchase simulation equipment to train EMS staff. And the other grant is for $10,000 to purchase equipment to set up a coordination and evaluation center at Weems that will be used during simulations and disaster situations. The Weeds Board of Directors is asking that you approve these grants and allow the initial expenditures to be made from the Healthcare Trust Fund with the reimbursements going directly back into the Trust Fund. Trust fund. Ms. Sheppey, your Plan Operation Director is here to answer any questions you may have relating to these grants. These grants do not require any match. What is the reimbursement timetable? I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Come up, Ms. Sheppey. You and the MLA. Good morning, gentlemen. Nicole Cheppy, um, facilities over at Weems. Uh, would you please repeat your question? What is the timetable for the reimbursement after you spend the money and you, should, you have receipts where you spent the money, you, you turn it in, they you, reimburse you, immediately within a year? You know, they're saying time? 30 days. 30 days. So moved. Second. Got a motion on flow by Commissioner Paris, second by Commissioner Burke. No discussion on that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passed unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioners. Mm. Item 15. As the board is aware, Weems Memorial Hospital reported our operation suffered some $1.1 in revenue loss due to Hurricane Michael. It appears has reported in past meetings that the Florida Department of Emergency Management has approved reimbursing the county and this is a miss, I typed this wrong, I'm sorry, $226,000 of the 1.1 million, which should be transmitted later to the, to, the count, to the county later this month. He actually checked on it for me last week. To date, Weems has carried that loss along with any revenue loss due to the new roof installation, but has not received any advances from the healthcare trust funds for operation or payroll. With an upcoming payroll and the timing of the funds from FDEM, Weems requests that the board authorize $150,000 advance from the 226 FDEM funds. When the funds are received later this month, the county will transfer the 150 back to the health care trust fund and forward the remaining 76,000 to Weems. So moved. Second. We got a motion on the floor by Commissioner Paris, second by two, Commissioner Breda and Commissioner Master. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That passed in none of them. And commissioners, these two items would have been presented to you by your CEO, your interim CEO, but he is attending a conference on hospitals and healthcare uh, yesterday and today. But he'll be back tomorrow for 
for, for the meeting. Uh, uh, so based on, I'll, I'll say this to some comments made earlier about the, the, the financials. The audit should be completed uh, here directly shortly, and the CPA that's doing the audit is planning to come here and present the audit to this Board of County Commissioners. So in case you have any questions about funds and anything relating to Weems and their financial situation, you can ask the auditor. If you can't trust him, who can you trust, right? Okay. And one more thing, tomorrow's <laughs> special meeting, remind, uh, uh, reminding you guys about tomorrow's special meeting, uh, you have Mr. Mark O'Brien and Jim Coleman. They represent the partnership of TMH Alliance. They'll be here tomorrow to speak to the board directly about their proposal. It's not necessarily anything new that they're talking to the board about, but there's been a lot of, let's say, questions about what TMH role actually is, and I think Mark wants to address those situations, and I get and feel any questions from the board. Do you, you'll have to, where Attorney Shula and I usually sit, you'll have, sitting there will be uh, your interim CEO and the chairman of the hospital board, they will represent the entire hospital board to ask any questions they may have. It starts at 10 commissioners, not nine, at 10. In the morning? In the morning. Tomorrow, right in here. All uh, right. Mr. Chairman. Uh, discuss. Go ahead, both of you. Uh, uh, I'm first. Go ahead. This right here? Yes, sir. It's bears are our neighbors, too, that down on Alligator Point. Okay. They're renting the houses down there. The people down there would like the rental people, if they could just put one of these in the houses when they rent it, to what to do with the garbage, if it was, you know, if you could contact someone. Okay. You just want to talk about the chest, what to do this with is the a good thing. Can, to go to leave, and the bears ain't even spreading it all over the road down there. Okay. And you want me to pass this on to the sit the realtors, realtors. Realtors. put it in their box, you know, in their house house. when they rent. Paul Parker, the only one down there? Yeah. They go yeah. to, they go to. Whoever does the rent and see if they can put them in their houses when they rent. I got you, sir. They I go, got you. They go to Mayor Alligator Point right there. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Alan Park. Oh. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be good. The mayor. Just give it to me, I'll just do it. Got one of those little cars like the post office uses, right? Mr. Chairman. Uh, All right. Let's, let's talk about. Um, the opportunity tomorrow that we're going to be hearing from Mark O'Brien. Uh, you know, it's been talked about about the, the that our commission and hospital board of directors is kind of kicking the can down the road and delaying, delaying, delaying. The most valuable asset in this county is the health of our people. And we, in my opinion, as a board, as a of commissioners, have the duty and responsibility to be prudent buyers of health care and what the actions of health care are here in our county. Um, I support our hospital board in gathering as much information as possible. Now one of the best things is is that we never issued a request for proposal for uh, management services. So we have the opportunity to ask and re-ask and re-ask questions of people who are providing services for us or proposals for us to get as much information as possible. And um, uh, Mr. O'Brien is going to be coming tomorrow to add to that uh, list of options that we will be considering, and I think it's a good thing. And I'm looking forward to that, and I just want uh, the folks of Franklin County to know that we have traction. We are moving on the complete, deliberate review of our health care systems in the entire county, and this is just one more entity that a responsible board is doing for you, the people in Franklin County, regarding health care. Well, we gave them, we gave them good uh, the same opportunity. We did, and you know, they were re asked to come again, weren't yeah. they? So keeping an open door. Mm -hmm. They were the act, they, they said they were going to, yeah. didn't have no difference. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. You what it is? Yep. Go ahead. All right, Commissioner, so item 16 we addressed, the Second Amendment resolution first thing this morning, so we're to item 17. Uh, your current ship policy is to rotate <coughs> bids rather than advertise for ship repairs and rehabilitation projects. This policy was in place due to the limited number of contractors that were participating in the ship program. Since the list of those contractors has grown to six, and in an effort to assist as many clients as possible with available funding, Ms. Lori Schweitzer Mills, your ship administrator, would like the board to authorize a change <coughs> to that policy going back to advertising for bids. This policy change would apply to both the Hurricane Housing Recovery Program, that's that 
plus million plus you just got excuse me and the ship rehabilitation repair program or strategy as they call it she would like the board to exclude emergency repair programs from this bid requirement so that those simple repairs could be addressed quickly so we have more contractors now so we want to go back to advertising because with advertising you know we get the best bang for our buck that's what she's basically asking the board to to allow so moved thank it got a motion on the floor by commissioner Perry, second by commissioner mass all in favor aye, aye. all opposed that passes now Chairman, before we move on, I want to ask something about this. Uh, Michael, I'd, I'd like for you to get together some information for us. Yes, sir. About what it would take to move ships uh, inspections to your office. Okay. So the county p and is doing the inspections. Okay. So for you, these projects. Yes, you're, you're building official and, you're, and your new inspector. Okay. Yep. I'll have that at the next meeting, sir. Who, who's currently doing that? I think it's a retired contractor that does it uh, for mm -hmm. the ship program. So is there a mechanism for like our building inspector to be paid for these? Yes. Inspectors? Yes. Yeah, that's yes, what yes there is. Yes. Yes. The ship allows you to pay uh, the inspector. I would have to see if it's from the admin funds or from the program funds. Well, but yes. As long as it yes. the program it funds. Help it help is, right, program. Commissioner? Yeah. yeah. It'll, It'll, help program. Okay. It'll help fund their, uh, their budgetary needs and planning and zoning. You respect to paying two different it would. inspectors now. That's mm -hmm. things to pick up. And then you get a better inspection too, Mr. Smokey. Okay. That's what I'm after. Yeah, because there's been some, like Ricky said, there's been some difficulties getting some of this stuff worked out. Anyway, if you could bring it back to us. I will. Inspector. At the next yeah. meeting, sir, if that's okay. That's fine with me. Okay. That's just passing anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, I'm writing. I'm almost through. Slow writer. All right, so the, we already dealt with, uh, we have, I have two information items and I think it's important that I read, the, I'm sorry, did we vote? We're good? I didn't cut you guys off, yeah. did I? Okay. So, yeah, let me ask you a question. Yes, sir. Uh, I got a fellow in my dip. How was leaking? So you went in there and gutted it because there was mold in it. Mm -hmm. Put in for ship, they had it. Told him he could get the ship, but now since he got it, they come up. They, it's too much work to do. But he was asking them to put a top on to go for the 25, and he would go do the rest of it weekly, monthly, and stuff like that. They can't afford to get no loan, but they want. They said they can't do that. Well, how, how about we get together after the meeting? So I don't, I don't want to state his name and address publicly right. and then I'll have Lori in, in, investigate that. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll ask her about it and get some information for you. Yeah, <coughs> but he, he was doing the work, but then he put in for help. Mm -hmm. They approved him up to 25. They ain't know he had good at the thing. He had to good it because they were full of money. He had to take all that stuff out. Yeah. All that sheet rock it. Matter of fact, he called it. I guess, I guess what, you're, that. Yeah, and what, what you're asking is that uh, the, the, that 25 is used as he uses his own money to help. Yeah. Okay, uh, yeah, we'll get that information to you. Okay, Commissioner, so item 18, I'm going to hold this up to you, hold it up to Royce, and hold it up to the public, our cool little sign. Um, so at your last meeting, Ms. Pat O'Connell, who's here, she's, she's the chair of your, of your um, complete count committee for the census. She introduced Mr. Lloyd Childry, Waste Pros Municipal Marketing Director of Government Affairs to the board and explained that Mr. Childry on behalf of Waste Pro made a donation to the county, uh, well, through the, the Census Complete Count Committee. What uh, Ms. O'Connell and Mr. Childry failed to do is explain that he donated $2,000 to the Complete Count Committee to assist with advertising, banners, posters, et cetera, to assist with promoting the Be Counted, Got that, Royce? Be counted. Message to every resident of Franklin County. Oh, wait, let me turn the cup, too. Get as much out of this as possible. Mm -hmm. On behalf of the board, I would like to thank uh, Waste Pro, especially Mr. Childry, for that large donation to this very important cause. In addition to that, uh, Pat informed me that Dewberry has committed about $500 to help with that cause, too, and so has Mr. Dan Garlic. Uh, and David kindly writes an article uh, in the newspaper every week about the census because we need to keep that 
front and center so everybody knows how important it is to vote. At some point, there's a bunch of other uh, people uh, that, that's uh, participating, not through money, but doing other things, and Pat's gonna have a complete list that she'll present one day to the board. So I just say this to the board so you guys can thank all these people that are helping with this cause and promoting this very, very important uh, thing that we gotta do. Well, we wanna thank Ms. Pat. Oh, you getting them? You getting them together? You doing a good job? <laughs> oh you. yeah, buddy. You doing a great job. Again. She hasn't even asked for a commission yet. Imagine that. So yeah. <laughs> Thank Keep you. Keep up the good Thank work. The man stand yeah. on top of it. Oh, he pulled it through stuff. And commissioners, that ends my report this afternoon. Is it afternoon? Yeah, yeah about well, two minutes like. afternoon. Close. Close enough. Hey, yeah. Anybody got anything else for Mister? I'm wrong. Okay, Thank keep you. up the good work. Thank you, sir. Next on the agenda be Mr. Michael Shuler, County Attorney Report. Uh, Commissioners, I've got one action item for you concerning my request that the board authorize me to utilize Mr. David Theriak, your outside counsel on land use planning matters on two different issues. One involves a quarter passy lawsuit or the two lawsuits filed with Mr. Quarter Passy, mainly to involve potential post hearing matters and subsequent proceedings that we have to deal with in, in that litigation. And I also want to uh, work with Mr. Theriak to bring back to you a proposal to create a new process on how you can consider handling future requests for land uses, um, land use changes, rezoning changes. Uh, actually, it would apply also to requests for variances and special exceptions. Uh, as part of representing the county in this uh, lawsuit filed by Mr. Court of Policy, it's come to my attention that in the last legislative session in 2019, the Florida legislature made an important substantive change in the law, uh, basically creating a new provision for awarding attorney's fees to prevailing parties. Uh, my read of the statute is uh, there is a way to avoid that prevailing party lawsuit provision. Uh, but we would have to bring back to the board a, a, a procedure for you to consider to essentially uh, use a special master to hear uh, future matters involving land use changes, rezonings, and potentially also variances and special exceptions. But I, I need board authorization before I can bring him in as co-counsel to discuss the matters I've just described. So moved. Second. We've got a motion on the floor by Commission Master, second by Commissioner Jones. Any more discussion on that? Uh, Mr. Chairman, this Please. is going to cover both, correct? You don't yes, need sir, to? that is correct. Uh, the two, two quarter passy lawsuits, or two lawsuits filed by Mr. Quarter Passy, um, but I'm, I'm mainly interested in um, this issue involving the special master. That, okay. that, that, that will affect, uh, it really won't have any impact on Mr. Quarter Passy's lawsuits. He's already filed his lawsuits. Uh, the circuit court case potentially would involve a claim for potential prevailing party attorney's fees. That, that, that applies equally to the county as well as to Mr. Porter Passy, but I'm thinking more about matters moving into the future. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. Any more discussion? Yes. Uh, in the second paragraph of uh, your action item here, it says the lawsuit filed by Mr. Ward. That's wrong. That's right. That's just a typo. That's just a typo. Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, no, Mr. Ward has no. not filed a lawsuit. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Right. Sorry about that, Commissioner. Anybody I else? was preparing this after 9 o'clock last night, so <laughs> my apologies. Oh, no excuses. Mm -hmm. Any, anybody else? All right. Y'all ready? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? That passed unanimous. Typically, I don't go over informational items with the board, but, there, but I, I do want to uh, for at least a couple of matters. One, at your last board meeting when I brought back to the board a discussion on the your approval uh, of two matters. One was your approval of the existing legal description for the fenced-in area at Bay City Work Camp, and then also your consideration of the additional acreage outside of that fenced area that had been requested by the sheriff. The board's discussion um, uh, pretty rapidly went to an issue that was of, of greater importance to the board. My apologies for not recognizing that. But you wanted to have, for me to have a discussion with the sheriff that there would be no use of county employees or county equipment, um, uh, discussion of no subletting of the property for these county employees while they're on the county clock. I, I did have that conversation with the sheriff. 
Uh, and I have informed you that is my item number two, which is my first informational item. I'm not asking the board unless, unless the board has any other direction today. I wasn't necessarily asking you for board action this morning, but I did want to inform you that uh, my, my understanding of the conversation with the sheriff is he's got no issue with one potential exception of, of having county employees, county equipment out at Bay City Work Camp during their time while working for the county. But he did inform me that, uh, as he does with other uh, 501C nonprofit corporations, that his sheriff's work crew does provide services to those nonprofits. And that, of course, would involve having uh, some paid county staff member supervising them. Uh, you know, that could be certainly seen as being in, in contrary to the board's instructions at the last meeting. So I just wanted to inform you of that. Uh, and my intention is to bring this up, uh, unless the board has other directions, I would bring this up at a future meeting for you to give me some directions and instructions on how to proceed. Um, and then the other matter, informational item only, is item number four. I'm skipping over item number three, so which Commissioner Bolt's in your district, so if you want to talk about that, we, we certainly will. Okay. Uh, but item number four concerns the St. George Island Overlay District. Uh, that future public hearing is coming up at your first meeting in March. Uh, one of the, 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 the material issues for discussion at the last public hearing was the board's uh, insightful question of, well, exactly how many lots are affected by this C4 residential uh, zoning category on, within the Everlay District. Uh, my understanding of the facts has proven to be not just mistaken, I would say badly mistaken. Uh, I was under the belief that we had something less than 70 C4 residential structures within the Everlay District on the island and approximately about that same number of vacant C4 lots. Uh, I went back after the board's last meeting. I made two counts of the, the C4 zone lots within that district area. My first count came back at 290 total C4 zone lots. And that would also include the, the roughly 70 that have been built. My second count came up with 289, so it's, it's a much larger number than I was under the belief of and what I've been representing to the board and the public, so I want to take this opportunity uh, to correct that, that factual mistake. Again, not asking the board to take any action item, but I did want to inform you of those two informational items. And that concludes my report. I'm, I'm prepared to answer any questions directed by the board. Right there on that Bay City work camp, he pulled to do the thing we like we had in the order, right? The board has, in concept, I think, agreed to convey the land as opposed to leasing the land. Um, I think you've made that decision based on my recommendation that you not retain ownership of the property. I, I'm concerned with the county. Uh, if you retain ownership of the, the, the real estate, you then would potentially uh, be subject to claims as a landowner, even though you're not operating the Bay City Work Camp. Uh, but at this point, the, the total amount of conditions and limitations and restrictions imposed by the board has not been finalized. So you're perfectly free as a board to uh, add in this additional, uh, uh, I wouldn't really call it additional, but I would say it's more of a clarifying comment at your last meeting that the board does not want um, there to be any county equipment or county employees at the property while they're on the clock working for the county. That, that you have not lost control of that decision at, at this point. Well, we already have done that, right? Yes, I, I thought that I had written that up clearly enough that the county would not provide any ad valorem support uh, for this project, but uh, my read from the board's comments at the last meeting is I needed to clarify that further, so I have gone back and clarified uh, the written document to reflect the board's comments at the last meeting. I've had that discussion with the sheriff, and with that, that exception of having some work crews out there, he's, he's perfectly fine with the board's restriction. Okay. But I also think it's fair to state that having work crews out there with paid county employees would, would to all appearances, be in violation of the board's instructions. So me all too. I can do is come back and inform you and at some point ask for you to give me some further directions on what to do. Because oh, they're going to have to have an old seal. I'm sorry? Yep. Yes. Yeah, they got to have somebody working. Yep. And what does that lead to, potentially? 
that. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Mm -hmm. I should ask permission. But one, one second. I think you open Pandora's box. When you allow one, you know, you don't know if they're there cutting grass or, or what they're doing and when they're there and how often they're there. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Anyway, this is just something for us to think about today, right? Yes, sir. I'm not asking the board for any Everybody just think action about today. I just thought it was an important enough issue to bring back to you publicly uh, because you had, you had asked that question at the last meeting, and I wanted to bring back to you my understanding of the conversation with the sheriff. Uh, and again, he, he said he had no problem with the restriction, but he didn't want to disclose to the board that, you know, like he does with other nonprofits, he would intend to use his sheriff's department work free, providing. I don't know, cutting the grass, making the repairs. Like, yeah, some of the people that's in there are to provide some of this. They, they can work. That's what I'm saying. They, mm -hmm. They're pretty much going to get a free ride. They, they I thought that's what that was starting to start with. And they could cut the grass and they could do a lot of things to improve their skill set. So once they complete or uh, rehab and they got some skills to go out and get a job. We ain't said it. I ain't going there to live up and sleep all day. <laughs> I don't know. Don't do that. Something for us to think about. Yeah, yeah. it is. Okay. All right. Anybody got anything else for Mr. Schuler? You're doing a good job, Mr. Schuler. Keep up the good work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Public. No, it's commissioner coming. <clears throat> Thank you. Commissioner coming. No I think more. we had a good legislative day. It was good. Yeah. That's good. It was very good. That's good. With no more comments. We commented all go out. <laughs> Meeting the John. Yeah. It's time for a possum sandwich. <laughs> <laughs>